சிவாய ஓம் நம 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 சிவாய சிங் தி கெப்பாசிட்டி இந்திராகா 
to create reactions in me. But to be so, a karma yogi, one has to be their own a bhakta. There is no such thing as bhakti yoga. There are two nishtas mentioned in our shastra. Lokesmin dvidha nishta. Pura prokta maya anag. There are two committed lifestyles for moksha. And those committed lifestyles are called nishta. Jnana yogene nishta. Karma yogene nishta. A nishta characterized by jnana meva yogaha, karma yeva yoga. Two types of nishta. <coughs> jnana yoga is for sankhya, sankhya nam jnana yogena nishta. Sankhya is a sannyasa. A renunciate. Either you can seek as a renunciate, as a sannyasi, or you can seek as a karma yogi. Bhakti devotion is for both. So separately there is no bhakti yoga. Understand this well. This is so because a sannyasi doesn't have any obligatory duty. <coughs> he is not obliged by an act of by a ritual of sannyasa renunciation, he is absolved of all duties. And the duties towards the family, duties towards the society, even duties towards Pitris and Devatas, he takes leave of all of them, all of them in a special ritual. He performs Shraddha, Ashta Shraddhas. Everything that is to be done is done in one ritual. And then he gets release, <coughs> a scriptural release. The very Veda which enjoins him to do duties, the Veda releases him when he takes the vows of renunciation. Bhuvu Sanistamaya, Bhuvaha Sanistamaya, Suvaha Sanistamaya, Iti is Bhuvasuva means all the three worlds are given up by me. I see only Parameshwara to the exclusion of everything else. <coughs> and such a person who is a non competitor in the society, who pursues this knowledge, is a sannyasi and he seeks Bhagavan in the form of knowledge. <coughs> so, this is a sannyasi. The other one is Karma Yoga. Sannyasi has no duties. Karma Yogi has got what? <coughs> duties. A Grahastha or a Brahmachari or a Vanaprastha. If he is not a Sannyasi, he has got certain duties. <coughs> These duties imply also daily rituals. Nitya Remitika Karma also are duties. Daily rituals I have to perform. So, if this is so, sannyasi has no duties, <coughs> karma yogi has got all duties. A third person called bhakti yogi, if he is there, tell me, has he got duties or not? Got? That means he is not a <laughs> bhakti yogi. <laughs> Or you are using the word bhakti yogi for karma yogi. And therefore, bhakti is common. A sannyasi is not a bhakta. And karma yogi also is not a bhakta. This bhakti yogi, so called bhakti yogi, when he does kirtan, that is karma. Vachikam karma. When he does ritual, it is kayikam karma. If he does some dhyanam, it becomes what? Manasam karma. Therefore, bhakti itself, the act of bhakti, 
is what? Karma. Therefore, there is no bhakti yoga. Bhakti se mukti mil jayega. So, there is no bhakti. So, bhakti is common for all. Therefore, sannyasi also is a bhakta. And karma yogi also is a bhakta. There are only two lifestyles. If you are a vaidika, if you follow the vaidika dharma, either you should be a karma yogi or you should be a sannyasi. There is no other yoga. And therefore, in karma yoga, you gain antakkarana suddhi. In sannyasa also, you must have already <coughs> antakkarana suddhi, then only sannyasa will stay. Otherwise, sannyasa also you have to renounce. You renounce everything else and take sannyasa, and you have to renounce sannyasa too. So, you have to have antakkarana suddhi for sannyasa. Sannyasastu mahabaho dukkha maptuma yogataha. Yoga Yukto Murid Brahma Nachire Nadi Gachati Vidyata. In here, to be a devotee is to be a Karma Yogi. And in order to be a devotee, you must have special actions which bring the devotee out of you. Devotee is nobody <coughs> as one among the guys. <laughs> who are inside. There is a father, there is a husband, there is a mother, there is a wife. There is a sister, there is a brother. Each one has so many roles. And one of them is what? Devotee. The devotee is a guy, so who comes occasionally. And therefore, karma yoga is, whole life is karma yoga. Occasional devotee cannot be a karma yoga. You have to be a devotee first and devotee last. A devotee father, a devotee mother, a devotee husband, a devotee wife, a devotee sister, employee, employer, etc. Devotee is a fundamental person. And that individual as an individual. If you are devoted to the Lord, role playing does not change the devotee. Father will be replaced by son. Son will be replaced by father. When you relate to your father, you become son. When you relate to your son or daughter, you become father. Therefore, the role, one, one role is substituted by another. But when I, when I think of my son, the devotee is not displaced. That's what's happening to us now. And therefore, the devotee also, when I think of the Lord, I become devotee. Therefore, the Lord becomes one among the fellows in the role. We call him the Lord, but he is displaced by my father and son. Look at that. This is a silly situation. And therefore, I have to have a program of conversion. This program of conversion is to do special actions of devotion. Even though when I perform the role of a father, doing my duties, then also I am a devotee, but I forget. I have to bring the devotee out of me to be there even when I play different roles. And that requires a program of converse. And therefore I have three types of karma. Understand here? Three types of karma. Of what? Devotion, bhakti. So, kaya vang mana. Karyam, Kaya Karyam, Bhak Karyam, Manak Karyam, Uttama. They are Karyam Uttamam Sreshtam. Why? Because they are acts of devotion. When you perform a Vaidika karma like Agnihotra, a fire ritual, or you perform puja, it is called Kaya Karyam. Understand? Kaya ne physically. Kāryam, Kṛtam Kāryam, what is an action that is done, Kāyam, directly connecting you to Ishwara. Like when I place a flower or I, I offer an oblation unto the fire. Both are Kāyam, Kāryam, which is not an ordinary thing. 
to do puja means you require to have an extraordinary so build that build the free will enjoys the maximum <coughs> freedom when you perform an act of puja because when you perform duties towards society etc towards family you know you are interested in all of them. in that well being your well being also is locked up but whereas here this when i perform a puja the immediate result is not seen by you that is seen drishtapal here the palam is purely adrishta <coughs> and where there is adrishta alone is involved drishtapalam may be there it is all that is only satisfaction if you are satisfied there is an adrishta immediately you don't see yourself but still you are doing it means the freedom enjoyed by you in the free will of you that freedom is maximum expressed because it is pure volition of yours you can live a life without puja too there are millions of people without doing any puja or any prayer they also live their lives but to do that it does it is an expression of your free will therefore in that in that very act of doing doing a puja you are bringing out the devotee in you you don't require any other result but there is other result because it is a karma it can produce adrishta that can knock off all the obstacles in my life therefore uttamam karyam it is shreshtam karyam since it is able to purify you the act of worship is a special action bringing the devotee out of you kaya 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 vaan mana karyam uttamam bhavati thus when i sing in praise of the lord or i do some oral japa or mental japa all these are considered to be acts of bhakti and there is all karma yoga kaya vaan mana karyam uttamam what are they ujjanam japas chintanam kramat kramat respectively kaya karya vak karya mana karya is down below ujjanam japa chintan kaya karya puja what mana karya means no vak karya is japa or japa mana karya is mental japa or chintanam bhagavat chintan ishwar smar purely mental what are they further he says kaya vang mana karya muttamam ujjanam japas chintanam kramad jagatai shadhi yukta sevanam ashtamurti vridev pujanam well talking about puja first he points out the pujanam is the best form of pujanam is ishadhi yukta sevanam jagatah jagatah ishadhi jagatah sevanam sevanam worship of this jagat the world how looking upon it as the form of ish jagatai ishadhi yukta sevanam that worship jagatah sevanam ishadhi yukta sevanam jagatah is puja nambhavati what kind of puja puja it is he says ashtamurti vridev puja ye deva ishwara who is ashtamurti yesterday we saw that the creation is non separate from ishwar if that is so then the lord is presented here as ashtamurti a person who has eight eight facets ashtamurti eight forms eight four eight eight faceted lord who is he what are those eight factors well one is 
the, the one is the five elements Akasha, Vayu, Agni, Apu, Prativedi, Pancha, Bhutan. Then Chandra Surya. The, the Chandra Surya is Chandra the moon, Surya the sun. Only from our solar system, okay? From the standpoint of a fellow on the earth, and he is looking at the Lord. Where is the Lord? I say the whole thing. As the sun and moon, as his eyes, the space as his body, boy is his prana, the water is his bladder. <coughs> like this, so the earth is his feet, that's the whole thing, Agni. Agni is his mouth, the fire is the mouth, the thing. This is the, the, the Ashta moon, uh, five plus two. And the Jiva, the one who is looking at the Lord, and he is also one more factor. Bhagavan includes you also. We always think Bhagavan is all pervasive and we exclude ourselves. <laughs> and so, Bhagavan includes your body, mind, sense complex also. Then he becomes Ashtamurti, Vrit, Deva, Poojanam, Iti Upasana. This is what we call visualization. Isha Vasanam Sarvam. That visualization of Ishwara as one who includes my body also. His form is all form. It is a particular meditation, chintan. It is meditation, first he finds self, which is another form of puja, a mental puja. Then he tells you, so what is, what is the puja? Is generally usual puja, we know. This is a special puja he talks about, which is visualization and which is called upasana. And the next one he says, Uttamastava Uchamandataha Chitta Jam Jape Dhyana Muttam Jape Dhyana Japaha Eva Dhyana Jape Dhyana Japam Eva Japahi Dhyana Japahi Dhyana Hai Japa Dhyanam Japa Meva Dhyanam Japa Dhyanam Japa Dhan Dhyanam And what kind of Japam? Chitta Jam Japam Chitta Jam Japa Dhyanam Chitta Jam Chitte Jatam Chitta Jam Chitte means Manasi Jatam Born What is born in your mind? What is, what is it called? In one word? Born Mental, mental, not of course mental. So mental, so mental japa, mental japa is dhyanam. Japa means what? Japa has got a, some differences there between japa and sthava. Stuti asthava. Sthava means there is yeah, there is a there is a yeah. Yeah, yeah, a group of words. Word is our word. So a group of words. So all describing Bhagavan's glory or your imploration to Bhagavan. Your imploration. Your imploration to Bhagavan or the Bhagavan's glory itself. Even your imploration, your request, etc. Also is Bhagavan's glory as the karma palatata is. So this, this, this is called Stavam. Namaste Yastu Bhagavan. Hey Bhagavan, Namahate to you my salutation. The Vedic, this is purely Vedic. Namaste Yastu Bhagavan, Vishweshwaraya Mahadevayatrayam Bhakayatri Puran Takayatri Kalagmi Kalaya Kalagmi Rudraya Nila Kanthaya Jayaya Sarveshwaraya Sada Shivaya Sriman Mahadevaya Namaha. What is this? Not Japa, it is Stava. There are many words. All of them, all of them to so glorify Bhagavan. Or Sahasrana, Vishnu Sahasrana, or Shiva Sahasrana, or anything. Which is, which is a song of praise, Miraj Bhajan, or Jagaraja's Kirtan, 
So any one thing or your own composition, whatever. So that is what we call stab, wherein many sentences, words are all involved. This is called a stava, which is uttama, which is good. Uttama stava, uchamanda tege. Uttama stava. So stava hai ho uttama. This stava is uttama means sreshta, sadhana it is. When you are stava also again, you can sing in place of the Lord or you can just recite the names of the Lord. Okay? There are two types of stava again. That's why the word stava is used. So singing in praise of the Lord. That singing also you must take into account. This is what we say here. So modern day is a very popular thing. So you sing in praise of the Lord. When you sing, like similarly, just, just when, you, when you repeat the name of the Lord, then there is, of course, an elevation. When you sing the same names, then there is an absorption. Because music has got a knack of bringing absorption to the mind. So if you simply just repeat, Radesh Sham, simple. Radesh Sham is what? The Lord Krishna. So with, with Radha. So this is, this is, Radha means his Shakti. So this, the Lord with his Shakti, with his power, is called Radhesh Shama. This is of course Radhesh Shama when you say, definitely you think of the Lord. But, but it doesn't bring any absorption. Radhesh Shama, Radhesh Shama, Radhesh Shama. If you say, it's okay, it's little Japa. But if you sing, then Radhe Shama Radhe Shama Radhe Shama Radhe Shama Radeshyama, Radeshyama, Radeshyama. This is also repeating Bhagavan's name. Radeshyama, 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 Radeshyama. Radeshyama, 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 Radeshyama. Radeshyama, Radeshyama, Radeshyama. Shama Radhe Sham Radhe Sham Radhe Sham Radhe Sham Radhe Sham I'm not a musician. Dora Sam Radhe Sham Radhe Shama Radhe That is music. It is music. Bhagavan Ka, music. Music also Bhagavad Suru. Only the other music, I don't know that there is Bhagavan or not. It must be there. So, it is everywhere in Still there is no absorption, it is exciting. No? That is excited Bhagavan. Radhe Shama Radhe Shama Radhe that is Uttamastava. Uttamastava. This kind of singing can be reduced to <coughs> Japa. It can be reduced to Japa. Look at it. When you do puja, your limbs are involved. Flowers involved, an altar involved, and mind is involved. Words also are involved. In other words, the three karanas, the three karanas, kāyena, vācha, manasā, all the three karanas are in play, are employed when you perform yavichu. You chant the mantra, you use the limbs, 
you offer a flower and mind of course is involved. All the three karanas in puja. So that's why puja is a complete thing. Puja. But then, after the puja, then when you are purely chanting Bhagavan Nama, called Parayanam or singing, then what is involved? Two karanas are involved. What are the two karanas? Walk and Mana. <coughs> so you are reducing from the three karanas to two karanas. Then two karanas again. From, from what you call this, suppose you chant or sing, sing the Bhagavan Sustuti, then from there again you reduce it to one, one now, and again reduction in the organ of speech itself. There is in employing the organ of speech, I again reduce from a wider area of stava stuti praise. I bring to only one chant. Namaste yastu Bhagavan Vishweshwaraya Mahadevaya Trayam Bhagaya Tripuran Dakaya. From this I chant only one thing. Om Namah Shivaya. Then what? Om Namah Shivaya. Then what? Om Namah Shivaya. Again, I have reduced, look at this, from puja to stava, and stava to one japa. Japa is a repetition. One nama is repeated. Again and again is repeated. Anything repeated is called japa. Okay. There again, further you can reduce also. How? Uttamastavat Uchamandataha Japat. You add Japat there. Ucha Japa. Ucha Japa is when you repeat orally, loudly. It is called Ucha Japa. Then from Ucha Japa, you come to what? Manda Japa. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Oh, Why? It's like a telescope collapsing. <laughs> so you are absorbing into yourself the same thing. So Om Namishwa, when you hear, you hear others hear. So double action, when you chant, you hear yourself, which is a very beautiful thing. The mind gets saturated with that. Then afterwards, it is brought to Manda Japam. Therefore, look at this. Stava, Uttamastavaha, Tasma, Uttamastava. So from Uttamastava, then Ucha Japa, from Ucha Japa, then what? Manda Japam. Manda Japam means what? Not dull Japam. Manda is also dull. Okay? So not dull Japam. Here Manda is in a low, in a low volume. So that is Manda Japa. Then from that Manda Japa Dapi, then what do you do now? You go to meditation. Chitta Jam Japa, Dhyana. So then slowly you go to purely a mental Japa. This is how from Puja to Stava, Stava to Ucha Japa, only one thing. Ucha Japa to Manda Japa, Manda Japa to Dhyana. Chitta Jam Japa. Dhyana Muttamam. <coughs> That's one leads to the other. The Chitta Jam Japa Dhyana. The Dhyana the meditation which is born in the mind. Chitta Jam Japa which is the form of Japa. Same Bhagavan Nama I know, Repeated mentally becomes meditation. So meditation also is what? Puja. Meditation also is another type of Puja. But purely meant. Uttamam Bhavati Kramat. One, one is superior to the other. What is superiority here? It is like the, in a rung, in a, in a ladder, there are different rungs. You know, this crossbar is called a rung. Now, the first rung, second rung, third rung, fourth rung, which is superior? Definitely the fourth one is superior. Is it superior? No. Eh? Everything is The three things are not down below. Where is the fourth one? Eh? <laughs> which is closer to the goal. 
Yeah. And we say closer to the goal. Where will you reach if the goal is not there? <laughs> you start from here only. From the first run, you start. Therefore, it is not, one is not superior, one leads yes. to the other. Otherwise, you will think that it's superior. I am doing superior meditation. <laughs> Fellow sleeps in meditation. <laughs> he will give up puja, etc. Because he is doing meditation. Meditation means go to sleep. So, if you do some of these things and then you go, then everything will work. Then dhyana will work. Therefore, the dhyana should be preceded by some kind of puja, some kind of chanting. Then afterwards you do mental chant. This is this is method. There is a method. Otherwise, this dosha. Dosha will be there. Upakrama, dosha will be there. So what is to be done first? What is to be done later? Like someone was trying to do samba, you know, with this guy. And then he was told that you must, uh, you must, uh, you must have tamarind water and you must uh, cook the dal. The tab in the tamarind water, he put the dal <laughs> to cook. And then he, all the cows can come home, but this won't, this won't get. But he, for everything, there is a method. Ajya means what? Ghee. Ajya means ghee. 
So ghee, or any oil, viscous, any viscous substance, fluid of course. So when it is ajja, not the ajja which is solid, solidified ajja, but it is viscous, it is, it is liquid. So the liquid, the melted ghee, so when you are pouring it from one vessel to the other, what happens? That is a flow. How does it come? As a continuous rib, a rib connecting both the vessels. Flow. You can see that. Suppose you throw water. How will it come? Broken. Naturally, because of wind, etc., it will be coming broken in droplets and whatnot. But whereas if it is viscous, it will form a, a ribbon. Ajadharayasam means consistent. For the consistency, the Ajja example is given. Because it is viscous, it comes down consistently. Then the other one is, he, he says, that is another example he gives, Srotasasam. Like the srotas, like even equal to the srotas means flow of water between the banks of a river and how it just, if the banks are so clean, the, the river is not meandering and then how it will flow. So consistently, second after second, two seconds of water. So keep, the water keeps flowing. And that is also an equal. That is also is compared here. Why? Because there are two things. One is the ajja. If you touch the ajja, it leaves something behind. sticky. Why? It's called sneham. That is called the snake. The, the viscosity is called snake. You know, friendship is called snake. So, so if you touch it, it leaves something that is called snake. Even if you wipe it, still there is art that is called snake. Friendship is called snake. Anything, anything viscous and sticky is called snake. Therefore, when you are doing Japa, repeating the name of the Lord, then how it should be? There should be love. There should be affection. There should be love. Here, it's only love. It's not that Kadane. <laughs> I have to do some Japa. <laughs> We are used to do like this. You know, when we were again, you didn't know what is the mantra meaning of Gayatri. Little bit we knew. And then we used to chant the Gayatri, of course. My mother won't give me coffee unless I I do Gayatri. Gayatri girl, do Sanjaya on That we have to do. Just little bit we try to do some Gayatri. And then, then slowly we, I developed a liking for it later. In the beginning, it was forced. And later, it, I began liking it. So I began liking that because when it began doing something happening inside, it felt very peaceful and all that. It's very nice. Then, I, yeah, I kind of a love for that very mantra, etc. Shraddha. And because of Shraddha, you develop a bhakti there. The bhakti also is snake. That love for it. So that's the great love. Even if it is not there in the beginning, you have to fake it and make it. So fake the love, <coughs> as though there is love. So you try to imagine something very loving and then begin doing it, you will find. But first you fake it, then afterwards you make it. That's how it is. Sarala chintanam ajadharaya srotasasamam sarala chintanam 
Therefore, viscosity that Ajjadharaya Ajjadhara is the example for love, with love and devotion. The other one, effortless, purity, effortless. What? The water flowing effortless. The effortlessness and purity of mind is clean of all other things. So similarly here, that consistent and easy effortless <coughs> flow of ghee as well as water in a river, how it is, so to Sarala Chiltanam is definitely better than Veralataha Parapara. That is the goal. That should be kept as a goal. That's right. So a distraction may be there. Whenever there is a distraction, you bring back the mind to the object. This japa is a great thing. Why? Because it helps you, it helps you gain antakarna suddhi and also it gives you a handle over your own ways of thinking. There is nothing as efficacious as japa. Any kind of meditation people talk, it is all young, either they go, either they go, bolega, it's a karamurai. Japa, Bhagavan, Nama, Japa. There is nothing equivalent to that. Lord Krishna said, Yajnanam Japa Yajnosmi. When he talked about his glories, he said, Among the various means of worshipping me, I am Japa. He said, Yajnanam Japa Yajnosmi. Japa is that. Jakaro Janma Vichedah, Pakaro Papa Nasana. Janma karma haro yasma, yasma japayat irita. Jakara is janma vichela. That means it destroys your future birth, etc. It means moksha that will give you. Pakaro papa nasana. Jakara stands for knowledge. Pakara stands for papa nasana. All destruction of papa. And therefore, pura, pura krita papa. And therefore, Japa is a complete sadhana, Japa sadhana. Jakaro Janma Chedaha, Pakaro Papa Nasanaha, Janma Karma Haro Yasma. Because it is able to destroy all your, all your karma and janma by giving knowledge, creating the basis for knowledge. Therefore, it is called Japa. And the Jar and Pakiti. So that is the vipatti they give. This is the japatthana. Then there is a simple technique is given also. We have varieties of things. Even for all this you require devotion to Bhagavan. If that is not there, what shall I do? My mind is so restless. There is a simple technique. What a technique? Vayu rodhana liyate manaka. Chala Pakshivat Rodha Sadhanam Deko Kisa Our masters, they never gave up. If the fellow says, Swamiji, I can't sit for puja, I can't sit for, I don't have enthusiasm at all. Japanai ka sekta hai. So, this, this, uh, this chanting etc. is not possible for me. What shall I do? My mind is so distracted, so restless. You can do this. Watch your own breathing. Watch your own breathing. See, this is nothing. This is no problem. You can watch even for one minute. Just one minute you can watch. Just a minute. The whole day you can do this. Now one then one one minute, one one minute. Do this. You do this, you will understand. Just watch your own breathing. Watching my own breathing. You become a witness. You become a witness to what? Your own involuntary action called breathing. So when you become a witness to your own breathing, mind becomes what? Quiet. There's no thinking. There's only watching. Whom you are watching? Your own breath. Therefore, you become, come back to this. Mind becomes tranquil. This is the greatest technique. This is a Technique, a secular technique, okay? There is no Bhagavan here. Ayu is Bhagavan, that's a different thing. You can look at it that way also. Ayu is Bhagavan. That is another thing. But a simple technique. Why 
रोधनाथ रोधनाथ निरोधनाथ प्रतिष्ठनाथ वायु हो सो बाय बाय द डिसिप्लिन ऑफ योर ब्रीथिंग और बाय बीइंग वॉचफुल अवेयरफुल ऑफ योर ओन ब्रीथिंग विदाउट चेंजिंग द द मोड ऑफ ब्रीथिंग जस्ट बीइंग वॉचफुल बीइंग कॉन्शियस ऑफ योर ब्रीथिंग एट एट दिस पॉइंट नास्ट्रल्स as as the air passes through the nostrils you can you can be aware by the sense of touch you can be aware of the air passing through the nostrils then passing out <coughs> passing in passing out in airing and exhaling in airing is called puraka exhaling is called recha puraka and recha puraka and recha inhalation and exhale just be watch you be going what try and whenever you get angry watch your breath real it works you will thank me ami ji it works you will write to me also if you want to you can write i am sure it works so many fellows wrote me saying that ami ji it works Watch your own. Whenever you get angry, immediately come. On. Watch your own breath. You become trying. Anger is a danger. Watch your own breath. Watch your own thana. Liyate mana. The mind gets back into state of tranquility. Liyate. How? Chala pakshi var. Roda sadhana. It is a beautiful device. For, for rodha sadhanam, it is a means for rodha, the rodha for putting his mind, the elusive mind, to put it in a state of absorption. Like even what? Jala pakshi rodha. Pakshi rodha ne jala. Suppose you want to, you want to catch a bird. You can't with bare hands go about catching the bird. You think you are going catching as you go near. This bird, they are so smart, you know, this bird, and then it will fly. I'm going to sit there. He is not afraid of you also. He doesn't sit there three feet away. <laughs> and then you go there, and then it goes here and sits there, and it minds its own business. And you think that oh, now it is not looking at me. Go near again, goes this way. Amazed. But if you can't catch. The bird with bad hands. You have to go for upaya. Upaya means technique, a device, a technique. It's called upaya method. What is the upaya? Roll the sadhana. What is the sadhana? A device. Jala. Jala is what? A net. You throw a net because it is so sudden. It gets caught, like even how a jala, a net is a upaya, a means for catching an elusive bird. So to for bringing about immediate tranquility for a restless mind, which is not capable of doing japa, etc., for the time being, you can just watch your own. You can do it before doing japa also every day. You can just watch your own breathing, and then create a mind ready for that. Why you wrote that? Liye why you wrote that? Liye the why you wrote that? Liye the man ha mind liye the gets absorption by why you wrote that? By watching your own breathing, and this is rodha sadhanam. This is a nirodha sadhanam. This why you wrote that? This rodha sadhanam. It is a means for. Mastering the mind, tranquilizing or bringing tranquility to the mind. Like even what? Like even a net is useful for catching a bird. Jala pakshi bird, like net and bird, like net and bird bird bird. Okay. And these are the techniques of Bhagwan Ramana. Okay. Thank you all. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah
சிவாய ஓம் நம 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 சிவாய